President Joe Biden responded to questioning regarding whether there should be a Cold War with China after his meetings with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Let's watch. I absolutely believe there need not be a new Cold War. We, uh, I've met, met many times with Xi Jinping, and we were candid and clear with one another across the board. And I do not think there's any imminent attempt on the part of China to invade Taiwan. And I uh, made it clear that our policy in Taiwan has not changed at all. It's the same exact position we've had. I made it clear that we want to see cross-strait issues peacefully resolved. And, uh, and so it never has to come to that. And uh, I'm convinced that, uh, that he understood exactly what I was saying. Biden also said that on issues where he and Xi Jinping had to, quote, further resolve details, they would have the appropriate cabinet members sit and meet with one another to discuss. According to The Hill, Biden told Xi Jinping that the United States' one-China policy toward China has not changed. The Washington Post states this policy acknowledges that the People's Republic of China is the sole legal republic of China and that Taiwan is part of China. The Hill writes that the U.S. holds unofficial relations with Taiwan, but through the Taiwan Relations Act, is committed to ensuring that the territory has the means to defend itself. Mm. Now, is this a kind of a different sort of conversation than we were having a couple of months ago uh, at the time of Nancy Pelosi's visit? I feel like back then it, was, it seemed to be very controversial to state what Joe Biden has just affirmed right now. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, maybe that was just a media-created circus. It then, does I feel that way. Think, and this uh, wouldn't be the first time. Remember, the media was against Joe Biden's withdrawal from Afghanistan, even though the people were for it. The media was clamoring for a no-fly zone in Ukraine, even though Biden, I think, rightly showed restraint yes. in that that way. He does seem to be veering toward, like, away from the kind of a pro-war uh, venom that is coming from parts of the press, despite obviously and supporting party. and parts of his own party. Yeah. I think the, uh, the question some people will have, though, is did uh, he ask Xi Jinping about a potential biosafety incident at a certain lab back in November? That's what we would like to know about. And uh, they've said, uh, reports are, that uh, that did not come up. He did not ask about that. Um, what, 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 I mean, do you I think mean, that is... Look, I don't want to have a more antagonistic relationship with, with, with China, but, um, I mean, don't we, we, we deserve answers to these questions. I mean, it should... Do you think on some level there's a complete understanding actually on the part of the U.S. government about what happened at this point two years out? Is this really the subject of conversations between Biden and Xi? Well, you're saying they, they already know. They've all agreed that it already happened and there's no, no more to say No, whatever about happened. It. <laughs> that whatever happened, they already know what has transpired. Well, they should be honest with the American people and the Chinese people then if, they're all, if they know what happened. Well, look, um, well, instead of leaving us to slowly piece it together, certainly then they shouldn't uh, be pressuring tech companies to censor what they actually all know to be true. Well, that, that may be the case. But look, we, you mentioned that there are, there are parts of Biden's own party that were um, you know, kind of hungry for war, it seems, in the context of yeah. his uh, administration. But of course, there are Republicans that seem to be pushing for uh, war with China as well. Fox News' take what, on this well, uh, that was that uh, Biden titled Biden's weakness on full display in Xi meeting president no match for China's tyrant. There's been a lot of appetite for uh, kind of pushing for uh, escalated tensions between the two leaders. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was tweeting critical of the press, not asking more questions about potential antagonisms between the two of them. And I wonder what you make of that, because there does seem to be some people say that the Republican disinterest in a war in Ukraine is because there was a longer game plan for a war with China that they would prefer to see out to see play out for various geopolitical I think that's certainly reasons. true of some Republicans, even some Republicans described as more, you know, ostensibly more uh, anti-intervention. You're right. They're anti-intervention on the Ukraine-Russia conflict, but they're still but, you know, they're very anti-China. Now, some Republicans, however, and, and I would I would include I would agree with this kind of framing. China is, I think, a more serious threat to world stability and the U.S. than what's happening between Russia and Ukraine. That does not mean that we should have a, a, a certainly a war with them or that we should uh, have a war with them over Taiwan or that we should have you know, any sort of military engagement with them. But we need some kind of strategy to, to it, it would be great if we could engage with them just productively, diplomatically, and resolve our differences. Um, the authoritarian backsliding that China has done over our lifetimes is, uh, is bad. It's a problem. It's a bad for the people of China. It's bad for us. And I would like to hear policy ideas or solutions from uh, our lawmakers that you're right, that don't include, uh, well, we're going to, you know, 
know, ship missiles to Taiwan or we're going to, you know, start World War III if that happens, but reckon with the fact that China knocks off our IP, that China has other economic issues, and that they are causing a lot of suffering to their own people, and that they <laughs> exported, maybe incidentally, a disease that killed millions and millions and millions of people. Yeah, our co-host, uh, Batyangar Sargan, made the point uh, that this is really more about trade, a trade war and trade conflict, yeah. and that Biden is basically um, obscuring that reality by framing it as a uh, Cold War issue, yeah. like, a, like an actual military exchange issue as opposed to a trade issue, and that ultimately there needs to be a more robust conversation about the ways that American workers are disadvantaged by certain trade sure. agreements. And this is something that Trump very much understood. I would argue that Bernie Sanders also very much understood in his messaging. Well, and, and unlike Bacha and, and maybe you, I don't have a lot of faith in the idea that we're going to rebuild American manufacturing and, and that that's going to be this, well, we'll just do our own thing, we, we don't, we'll rely on them less, we'll bring it all back here, I, I, I find that to be, I, I don't think that's realistic. That's my perspective Why on it. Why is that? Um, you think it's a fait accompli? We're never going to make America great again? I don't, and not, we're not going to make America an industrial manufacturing center again. Our, the, I think our regulations and our labor laws are, make it too economically prohibitive to do that here, and no one is going to be comfortable relaxing those or going backward in that direction. And so we have to, we have, we're, there's going to continue to outsource, going to continue to have robots do jobs instead. That's going to be the, I, I, I don't see that direction being slowed. Mm. So. All right. Well, a little bit of cynicism. A little sober, sober just analysis for me there. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that there are reasons why certain industries do remain in the United States. I think a lot of um, innovation continues to happen in the United States because we made it a, a, a foster that right. sort of an environment. And I think there are all kinds of crafts, as we saw with in the COVID context, um, where the supply chain really prevented us from having certain you know things that were necessary to our national security and our public health in yeah. place. There's a lot of reasons to invest in bringing things back home for those reasons. And instead of prioritizing saving pennies on the dollar for investors, which is what motivated a lot of the moves overseas. Well, here's one little thing we could do. This is not going to solve, by any stretch of the imagination, solve any, our whole entire problem with China. But when uh, Chinese um, students come here to study and learn from our great universities and then get shipped back, Let's not ship them back. Let's let them stay here and 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 uh, and strengthen and grow our own economy rather than sending them back. That's mm, the first well. thing I would do. And yeah. and uh, same of true of immigrants from all other countries. <laughs> Studying here, we can keep them in the country. <laughs> all right, uh, permissive uh, Im per permissive permissive immigration stands from from Robbie here. I, I, you love to hear it. We'll have more rising for you right after this.